Hello and welcome to another Block Spotlight with me, the least happy one, aka Mr. Sarrett. In today's Block Spotlight, we'll be looking at three items, three blocks. Steam engines, more specifically, Railcraft steam engines. Now this will continue on from the Block Spotlight on the steam boiler, which I would recommend you go watch after you've finished with this one. I'll put a annotation somewhere up the top most likely. Anyway, there are three steam engines for Railcraft. You have the hobbyist steam engine, most complicated looking one, the commercial steam engine, and the industrial steam engine. Three different ones. The hobbyist is probably one of the early engines you will start off with. It well, well, we'll get into it a little bit more. First of all, we'll have a look at the recipe. Now, this is the recipe for the hobby steam engine. Gold nuggets up the top, top three. The glass block in the middle square, the middle space. Piston in the bottom middle. And then two gold plate gears on either side of your piston. Not too difficult. Uh, not the cheapest, you will need a little bit of gold for this as well as some redstone and iron. Piston is vanilla minecraft that's just planks, wood planks up the top doesn't have to be oak, can be just about any type. Then cobblestone on your sides, iron ingot in the middle and bottom middle is a piece of redstone. You then have the gears for the gold plate gears you have to start with wooden gears, which are sticks. I'm assuming everyone knows how to make a stick. You then turn the wooden gear into a stone gear with pieces of stone around it, cobblestone I should say. You then put gold nuggets, four of, around the stone gear and you get your gold plate gear. To make gold nuggets, also quite easy, just a piece of gold in a crafting table just the one that gets you nine gold nuggets. Now you will need eight for your gears and then three more for the actual recipe itself for the top here. So you will need two pieces of gold for that. Now the hobby is steam engine. We'll have a look at the interface now. Quite complicated looking. Once you get going with it, it is it's actually quite a simple machine really. So we'll start on the right, being one of the more important items to remember to put in, and that's water. You have your input right here. You can put your bucket of water in there. Empty bucket comes out here and water goes in here. The water tank, obviously right here, will hold up to 8,000 units. That's eight buckets of water. Now this here is the internal storage for the energy produced or the Minecraft Jewels MJ. Next to that is where you put your source of fuel. Now coal coke not really one that I would often put in there. I usually go for coal or charcoal. And next to that you have well first of all let's put a lever down there you go, it's actually used that piece of coal. Can of course, being Railcraft, use coal coke. It has your temperature gauge right here. Now this thing here, the temperature gauge goes up to 500 degrees Celsius. It is in Celsius, of course. It needs to get to 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of water, for it to use water. We'll take that fuel out of there. And that's when it starts to produce steam. Obviously, this here is your steam tank. Steam is steam tank holds up to 8,000 units. Now this here is not running anything. So there we go. Now it's got something to run. In this case, a pulverizer. See, very slowly going up there. The hobbyist steam engine will produce up to 1.6 Minecraft joules per tick if you use the internal boiler. If you use the internal boiler, 1.6 Minecraft joules per tick. That is the maximum it will produce. 
which is barely enough to run this polarizer as you can see. Actually, if we go here, maximum power is 4 Minecraft joules per tick, so it's not going to run the polarizer. Not at maximum efficiency anyway. Now the hobbyist steam engine, you've seen I put both coal and coal coke in there. It can also use your charcoal, uses a few different fuel sources, even wood. Relatively simple machine. We'll have a look at two of them we have over here. Nice and ready to go. They do need, you can see this particular one here has steam going to it. It's not running, it does need a signal. Just a lever, will work fine. Now this one here, a little bit different to what we were just playing with over there, and that's because we have it hooked up to an external power, or well not power source, an external source of steam. That being in the form of a boiler, a very small boiler this one, but a boiler all the same. Now if you have steam coming from an outside source, you can see it's no longer 1.6 Minecraft, Minecraft joules it's per tick it's producing, it's up to 2. So if you use an outside source of steam, Hobbyist Steam Engine is boosted to 2 Minecraft joules per tick. So that's another interesting and useful way of running it. Now that's a We'll go put some cold coke in there. This here is one without without an external source, of course. So yeah, you can see that it doesn't actually need coal or temperature to increase if you're using an external. It's totally reliant on the boiler, the external boiler. And you can see it does produce a nice thin, steady stream city line of energy through the gold conductive pipe there. Now the next one, oh one thing I should warn about these is they will blow up. Steam engines are relatively safe. Hobbyist steam engines just like your steam boiler they will blow up. Let's make it daytime and I will get this one here going. There we go, slowly heating up. Once that heats up, I'll take away the water source. In fact, I'll do that now. There we go, it will use this water up eventually. And when it does, we'll add water to it again. So they can blow up, they do blow up, they will blow up, if the steam in it builds up, well actually it's the temperature, if the temperature builds up and you run out of cold water, if you add cold water to a hot steam engine, it will blow. If you run out of water, wait until the temperature goes back down to 20 degrees Celsius. If you don't, it will blow. Okay, just making sure you uh, hear that, you understand that these things will blow. <laughs> uh, I have had them a couple of times destroy a tree farm on myself. The next one though, move along, it's your commercial steam engine. It looks a lot simpler, of course it does not have an internal boiler uh, for you to use. You have to use an external source of steam, that is of course from an external boiler. I have two very large boilers down here going, producing quite a little bit, quite a lot I should say. So very simple interface this one, Minecraft jewels, stored, and steam. Simple as that. Now we'll have a look at the recipe. Recipe is a little bit more difficult than the hobbyist. Probably not, well you don't need gold so it's not as expensive in that regard. You need iron plates, glass, a piston and two iron gears. That's for your commercial. The iron plate is iron for iron in a rolling machine. So that's where it does become more expensive and a little bit more complicated to make. 
Then your iron gears are the stone gears that we made previously with four pieces of iron. So really not all the piston of course we've already made too. Not a difficult engine to make. Once you've got your rolling machine, the rolling machine itself is well it's not a difficult machine to make either. Just pistons, crafting table and iron. So you, you can skip to the, the commercial steam engine relatively quickly from the hobbyist. We'll have a look at it over here. This one here also needs a signal going to it. Once we have the signal going to it, the steam will be going straight in and it'll start producing Minecraft jewels. Commercial steam engine produces a constant, if it has a constant stream of steam, it will produce a constant four Minecraft jewels per tick. So twice that of the hobbyist. It can use up to 20 steam per tick. 20 steam coming in, in other words 20 steam from a boiler equals four Minecraft jewels. Really that's about as simple as the as it gets with the commercial steam engine. Not a difficult one to use and quite a safe one. Probably one of the the uh, biggest risks you'll have with it is using this gold conductive pipe. Well, you can see the line there for the power was a fair bit thicker already than the hobbyist. It will it will well I guess overload these pipes eventually. It will go red and the pipe themselves will blow. So that's one thing to worry about I guess. Now the next one and the last one is the industrial steam engine. Exactly the same interface as the commercial steam engine. Your internal Minecraft jewels storage and your steam and it holds 8000 steam. Exactly the same. In fact they all hold 8000 steam. The recipe The recipe for the industrial steam engine, very similar to the last two, except we use steel steel plates, the top three, glass in the middle spot, another piston in the bottom middle, and two steel gears in the bottom sides. Now to make steel plates, it's four steel in a rolling machine. Exactly, exactly the same recipe as the iron plates except with steel of course. Now to make steel we're actually standing on a blast furnace that's what you need. A blast furnace, coal won't do, you need coal coke. Put iron in the blast furnace and you'll get steel. So this one here will require a little bit more work just because you will be going to the nether to get your blast furnace. And then your steel gears, another stone gear with steel around it. So they're not terribly complicated recipe to make, any of them really. Probably making a few of them. Oh, there we go. The hobbyist steam engine just blew up. We will, well you can see the power in that pipe there. I'll leave that running. Probably won't blow up on camera, it will take a while. The industrial steam engine, however, this will very quickly blow up one of these gold conductive pipes. Let's turn it on. So I've got the redstone energy conduit from thermal expansion I'm using on this particular one just because they are a little bit safer. Now the industrial steam engine will produce as long as you have a constant steam or stream of steam <laughs> it will produce up to eight Minecraft jewels per tick. 8 Minecraft Jewels is 40 steam per tick. I'm using, to pump in the steam from the boilers, I'm using gold conductive pipe, uh, not conductive, gold waterproof pipe. Gold waterproof pipe will hold up to 40 Minecraft Jewels, uh, my, excuse me, will hold up to 40 steam per tick. So that's why you can't see the steam going up anymore is because one gold waterproof 
pipe coming from a boiler will hold the maximum steam that one of these or the minimum steam as well that one of these machines needs to run so producing quite fast and again of course it does need a signal just a lever will work fine just got the pulverizers up there so there's somewhere for this to go now two more items to consider when using the well any of these engines the steam engines is the crowbar and the industrial wrench the industrial wrench the uh, Billcraft wrench both of these items the crowbar being the one specific for these engines will change the direction just in case you plonk it down and it turns out you actually need it to go the other way the Billcraft wrench will do the exact same thing as the crowbar so <laughs> bouncing on the pipes that's a look at the three steam engines from Railcraft the hobby steam engine, commercial steam engine and industrial steam engine Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you in the next Block Spotlight. Bye bye.